the wooden legs if you have the stilt body then come to jaisalmer it was a saying of 12th century about the jaisalmer but the condition has been changed now everybody wants to visit jaisalmer yellow sandstone make jaisalmer look like gold made that is why jaisalmer is called golden city and jaisalmer fort Golden Fort This is the map of Jaisalmer. At the moment we are here at the Royal Palace, which is the highest building of Jaisalmer. You see that Jaisalmer is is triangular. There are only two, three triangles over here. This is the third gate of the fort. It's the last one from the entrance and the first from the exit. It's the strongest gate of the fort. It's called the Harap Hall, which means air gate. And it's really an air gate because the wind keeps on blowing all the time. It's even blowing now. It's really cool over here. The Jaisalmer Fort is one of the marvels of Rajasthani architecture particularly of the stone carver's art it is the second oldest of rajasthan's major forts after chittorgarh but is located in quite a bizarre location right in the middle of the thar desert with its huge turrets pointing skyward as one of the last princely bastions in the region this fort was famous for the bravery of its rulers and for the aesthetic sense represented by their palaces and havelis Jaisalmer fort appears like a yellow sandstone fabric that seems to issue skywards from the golden sands It is perched at a height of 76 meters on the hill Its sheer magic and splendid beauty makes it a popular tourist attraction in Jaisalmer. This was built by the Bharti Rajput Maharaval Jaisal about 800 years ago and reinforced by successive rulers the fort housed an entire township within its huge rampart the fort of jaisalmer has 99 bastions and its defenses were reinforced by having massive round stones placed all round its rampart in war situations these were hurled down upon their enemies below Jaisalmer Fort is the only living fort fort in the world. 3500 people are living in the fort. It counts more than 350 houses and 40 restaurants and hotels. The height of the fort 
is 250 feet. One thing is quite interesting about the fort is that, it's made, that it was made by illiterate people, but they made it in a very scientific way. You can't see the next gate from any former gate, which helped Jaisumar to save the fort. The Bastion envelops a whole township that consists of palace complex, the havelis of rich merchants, several temples and the residential complexes of the armies and merchants. Well, what a view, small town surrounded by the desert. Jaisumal looks like a ship in the desert. Jaisumal is a beautiful city. At sunrise and sunset, the sunlight reflects the yellow stone, which seems to be gold. That's why Jaisumal is called the Golden City. This golden yellow sandstone of Jaisalmer Fort, over 800 years old, crowns the Trikuta Hill. It is also known as Sonar Killa or the Golden Fort because it is made up of yellow sandstone and seems to ignite into a golden flame when scorched by the desert sun. Within its walls, defended by 99 turrets, lies the old city nearly a quarter of modern Jaisalmer. The city has an interesting legend associated with it according to which Lord Krishna, the head of the Yadav clan, foretold Arjuna that a remote descendant of the Yadav clan would build his kingdom atop the Trikuta hill. It then happened that the Bhati chief Raja Jaisal, a descendant of the Yadav clan, constructed the Jaisalmer fort in 1156 that went to become one of the finest forts in the country. And he did it on the behest of a local hermit named Isil. He built this fort as his capital as the earlier fort Lodarva was too vulnerable to invasions. Thus, he built the fort and the city surrounding it, thus fulfilling Lord Krishna's prophecy in the Mahabharata. These were various merchants who served and acquired a great deal of power and noble status in the royal courts of Bhati Rajputs who founded the state in the 12th century and proceeded further. But the rich merchant, inspired by the classic style of the royals, constructed huge havelis adjacent to each other in the nature of medieval culture and profusely decorated walls and ceilings and intricately carved outdoors and interiors. The soft yellow Jurassic sandstone makes up every part of the Jaisalmer fort from its outer walls to the palace, temples and houses within. The fort is 250 feet and from it one can also see almost every part of the town that has narrow winding streets and barrel-sided bastions. The fort is reinforced by an imposing crenellated sandstone wall which is 30 feet high. It has as many as 99 bastions, 92 of which were built between 1633 and 1647 to be used as gun platforms. These are four huge gateways and wind up to the fort. These gateways could be approached by walking through the narrow lanes. These gateways were named as Ganesh Pole, Suraj Pole, Bhut Pole and Hava Pole. There was a death well where traitors and criminals were thrown into by the second gate. The road to the main chalk is by the fourth gateway where many acts of Johar has taken place. This is also the historic spot known as the Satyon Ka Pankthya, Step of the Sati. While the city was built, 
there exist many beautiful havelis and a group of jain temples dating from the 12th to the 15th centuries these temples are dedicated to rikhab dev ji and sambhavna ji There are thousands of carved deities and dancing figures housed here. Same with the giant gods. There's Shiva and Parvati, and Vishnu and Lakshmi, and they are there in the carving. They are next to each other. They are couples. There are three temples. in the same compound and these are the two models of these temples this is the temple of the chandra prabhu and that's another temple um the the temples are made of the finest stone which is a special stone found in jaisalmer out of these the old palace of the maharaval is dominating the chahta chowk and it is a five story palace that displays some of the finest mesmery in jaisalmer since leading up to them is a fight of steps topped by the maharaval's marble throne The silver work of this throne is dazzling. The throne is known as the lion seat and is ever used only once at the king's coronation ceremony. Nearby lay the five-story Tazia Tower. constructed by muslim craftsmen who worked on the building with ornate architecture and bengali style roofs one more palace is the juna mahal that is old palace which is a seven storied building it stands under a vast umbrella of metal that is mounted on the stone shaft The left of the palace entrance is the place where the monarch would address his troops and issue orders from his throne. Now we are at the royal palace. This palace contains a lot of goods and rooms of the old times. This place belongs to a trust. The trust is running a wonderful museum inside. Come and let's see. The interior painted and tiled in typical Rajput style has been converted into a museum. It encompasses details of the maharajas, 21 different wives and their respective lineages. One can also see an assortment of royal garbs, weapons, thrones, and most curiously, the British era royal stamps. The Janana Women's Quarter, known as Rani Kamhel, was recently reopened due to the restoration made by the Jaisalmer government. The fort holds many temples dedicated to Surya, Lakshmi. Ganesha, Vishnu and Shiva but none of them is as impressive as the complex of Jain temples In the heart of Jaisalmer fort there are seven Jain temples in the same compound Jainism is a different stream of India religion Jains are known as the Jews of India Jainism was 
on the peak from the 4th to the 5th century. Followers of the Jainism was rich and business class people, so they spent lots of money for making these beautiful temples. In the carvings there are basically three patterns used, that's Hindu, Mughal and Kama Sutra. It's almost the same as in Gajuranda temples in Middle India. In these carvings there are millions of statues of Hindu gods and different postures and positions of sex and dance. These temples were made from the 14th to the 15th century. Tourism and the sandstone are the only source of income of this desert city. Built between the 12th and 15th centuries, the familiar Jurassic sandstone with yellow and white marble shrines and exquisite sculpted motifs covering the walls, ceilings and pillars, the temples are connected by small corridors and stairways. In a vault beneath the Sambhavna temple, the Gyan Bhandar contains Jain manuscripts, paintings and astrological charts dating back to the 11th century. The fort also has a peculiar gadget hoisted on top of its ramparts. Since mat departments were in short supply in those days, this was used to forecast the weather. Every year in April, a flag would be placed in its center and based on the direction in which it blew. The weather for the entire year was forecast. If it blew northwards, it indicated famine. And if it went westwards, the citizen could be rest assured that a fine monsoon was in the offering may seem a bit primitive today but the system was probably just as accurate or inaccurate as the Met Office nowadays. The first temple you come around is the one dedicated to Chandra Prabhu, the 8th Tirthankar whose symbol is the moon. It was built in 1509 and features fine sandstone sculpture in sandstone in Mandapa. To the right of the Chandra Prabhu temple is Rikhapdev temple. There are some fine sculptures around the walls protected by glass cabinets and the pillars are beautifully sculpted with apsaras and gods. This temple has a lovely and tranquil atmosphere. Other temples which may be currently close to the non-Jains include the temple dedicated to Parasnath, a few steps behind Chandra Prabhu. Entry is via an enormous and beautifully carved Torana, that is, gateway that culminates the image of the Jain Tirthankar, its apex. A door to the south side of the temple leads to the small Sheetalnath temple dedicated to the 10th Tirthankar, the image of Sheetalnath. Enshrined here is composed of eight precious metals. A door in the north wall leads to the beautiful Sambhavnath temple. Steps lead from the courtyard before the Sambhavnath temple to the Shantinath temple which was built in 1536. The enclosed gallery around the temple is flanked by hundreds of images of saints some of marble and some of jaisalmer sandstone. Steps led below the temple of Kuntanath temple which was also built in 1536.
It was built by Maharaval Gadsi in 1367 AD. A natural lowland was dammed to catch every drop of rain water. This lake played a vital role in the life of the people of Jaisalmer in the past as it was the main source of water supply for the city. The beautiful gateway which arced across the road down to the lake is known as Tilon ki Pol or the Gate of Tilon which was constructed in 19th century by a very famous courtesan named Tilon. The story of that gate is quite interesting. Still members of the king's family don't cross the gate because it belonged, it was built by a famous prostitute. Her name was Tila. That's why the gate was called Tila's Gate. It's still the main attraction of the lake. But later the king ordered to demolish it. When Tila came to know this news, she immediately built a temple on it. Later Tila's family sold it to the government. There is a small temple of Lord Vishnu on the top of the gate. The carvings of the window and archway is remarkable and delicate. The carving looks like it has been done on sandalwood, not on yellow sandstone. There are different buildings around this place. These buildings were built in different periods by the king's family, businessmen of Jaisalmer and different casting communities. Each place pattern is according to the particular community. If the building is made by Rajputs, the pattern is Rajput. The same is valid for Bremen. Festooned all round the lake are many small shrines and temples mainly dedicated to Lord Shiva and Vishnu and a wonderful plumage of birds can be seen here in winter. Women wearing colourful costumes used to come here to fetch drinking water every morning and evening. Now we are at Kadisa Lake. This lake was built by King Kartsi. However, the surrounding buildings were made by other people. It's amazing to see such a big, huge lake in the desert, isn't it? There are a lot of fishes in the water, but you can't catch them. They are holy fishes. It is said these fishes bring luck to die somewhere. So don't hesitate and feed them bread crumbles. It may bring you luck. Due to less rainfall this year, there's not much water in the lake. But when the lake is full, the water house seems to be floating on the water. Patwa Haveli 
this is one of the most ethnic and artistic haveli among all the havelis of jaisalmer the patwas who constructed these treasure of architecture were jains by caste but as they used to deal in zari and badla ornaments they got this name patwa patwas were well known businessmen bankers opium exporters and revenue contractors these skyscraper havelis were constructed by gumanchan bafna in 19th century for his five sons it took 70 years to construct these huge and beautiful havelis they had business concerns at more than 300 places in india afghanistan and china in the 19th century jaisalmer was center for traders engaging in the caravan trade with neighboring states passing through the thar desert with their intelligence they earned lot of wealth and to make good use of their amount they constructed a group of five havelis adjoining and similar to each other These havelis are symbol of their love for art and architecture. The carvings done on each and every single stone is remarkable. From a distance it appears as it is carved on wood. Each of the five havelis has been well decorated with splendid stone carvings, well carved balconies, ventilators, light holes and aerial windows. A sharp contrast to this hypnosis is the Nathmal Haveli. a 19th century mansion and a 21st century curiosity the architectural plan as well as the decoration of this lake like house is attributed to two brothers hathi and lalu one of whom carved the left side and the other the right the nathmal haveli is in many ways emblematic since his descendants still live here you can find signs of use everywhere they might not allow you beyond their ground floor shop but you can still gaze at the buildings exquisite facade taking in minutely carved charukas and jalis as delicate as filigree singing the 1880s opera of glory